Bill Hanna was supervising. Bill ran the studio, the, the business end of it. Uh, Joe went to uh, New York, threw up storyboards on the walls, and sold the shows. So it's kind of interesting what they they, they were great compliments to each other. Um, but you was asking me where I came from. I came from an advertising agency. It's still a, a very well known. It's named is Leo Burnett Advertising, Marlboro Kellogg's. Uh, uh, a good friend of mine invented the uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy. That's a story in itself. <coughs> uh, there's so many stories in this business that uh, I, I want to say one thing is kind of off 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 uh, of what you just asked about, Mark. But the, the writing is not given the the guys who come up with the original ideas. The rest of us meddle with it. We, we mold it. We kick it around and say, oh, I don't like that. I'm going to change it. So we better talk to the writers. The writers are the guys who come up with the goal. And I mean it. It ought to be a, a five or six writers up here. Mark, I've always, i said, I can write dialogue, but I don't know anything about structure. Structure is the story, the arc, the, the feeling. The, it's the real basis of the story. And the guys who do that, then the rest of us come along and, and start screwing it up. <laughs> but uh, it, 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 I do. I, I, I've never been on a panel yet when I didn't try to acknowledge the, the talent, the, the gold that is the writing. And uh, it's not, uh, I don't think it's interesting. You know, it's interesting. The actors come up, actors have done, what, four hours in any given episode of the show. Writers, producers, animators, the rest of them have probably put in 40 hour weeks on the same thing that the actors did for four hours. <coughs> and uh, yet the, the actors are the most interesting to the general public. Um, and they are the, the most fascinating personalities. Most of us are kind of dead and dumb when we get up here. <laughs> but to that, I started in advertising, uh, transitioned, uh, got to know Bill Hanna. Bill Hanna said, would you come to the studio? I couldn't sell simplified animation uh, to advertising agencies. And I eventually said, you've seen me voice direct. Uh, I wanted to start doing that with you. And he pulled me over into that end of it. And I went on and I've been doing that for a long, long time. Uh, Transformers, G.I. Joe, how many of you know of uh, Gem and the Holograms? <laughs> it's a girl show and probably one of the w most enjoyable shows I ever did. We had six bad girls and six good girls, and uh, they're all still around, and I still hear from them, and uh, uh, I never uh, hit on any of them. <laughs> It, it was it was it was a fun thing to do. A gal by the name of Christy Marks, writers again. Christy Marks uh, wrote the best guy dialogue. She wrote some of the GI Joes and some of the Transformers, and was the story editor, which is the, is the person who says yes, this is right, this is on on on, on the mark for the story. Christy Marks uh, wrote to, and was the story editor on uh, Jim and the Holograms. Um, but the again. The writing, and uh, it, you guys are not as interested in writers as you are in, in, in actors. And actors are more fun. They, they get up here and clown around a lot, and we go stumbling through. Uh, what did you do? Anyway, that's how I ended up at Hanna Barbera. I, I, <laughs> I came out of the advertising business and faked my way into. And uh, Joe looked at me as a. You don't have a, a portfolio, do you? A portfolio is what a, a, an artist brings in and shows his artwork. I'm without portfolio. I can doodle, but I, I, I enjoyed working with the actors. And I had come from being a commercial director in, uh, uh, eventually in Chicago for a while before I went to the advertising agency. So announcing Ad Agency, uh, Los Angeles, Hanna-Barbera, uh, eventually into stuff that was uh, labeled as being Marvel material. So now, now what was your first Hanna Barbera job? You were, you were doing commercials for them first? Uh, first what? First for Hanna Barbera. Your first job for Hanna Barbera. The one I remember the most, I think, is Super Friends, which has become another. Which had a pretty big cast. Huh? Which had a pretty big cast. Yeah. Uh, oh, big cast was uh, all the G.I. Joe's Transformers. They were selling these toys. 
So we had as many as 18 in characters in okay. the show. All right. <laughs> um, when, what was the first thing you know you did for Hannah Bradbury? What was the first show you did for them? Do you know? Um, Joe was going to be in New York, and uh, Bill said he wants you to do the food stones. Uh, hey, that's his stuff. I don't touch that. And uh, so I had uh, who who is Car um, Harvey Corman? He played a kazoo. Uh, did anybody remember the name of the character? Great kazoo. Yes. Great the zoo. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I was told he would be the guest artist, and he was hot. He was right out of Car uh, whose show? Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett. Thank you. What's my name? <laughs> at, the, at the time, at the time, um, you know, at the time, he was Harvey Crumb was doing the Danny Kaye show. Uh, at the time. Oh yeah. All right. Anyhow, that was that was a kick because Joe was had at that time up to that time he had always said I, I do that show and I I got to do that as one of the first shows I did uh, went on to do I only did I think three episodes one with Harvey Corman and uh, the only celebrity worked with Mel Blanc a lot uh, on uh, the guy that the guy that came out of the uh, out of an iceberg had been frozen for. Uh, Captain Caveman. <laughs> Anybody remember? Captain Caveman. Yes, Captain Caveman. <laughs> and I told Bell when he came in, he, he said, "Am I going to have to do this every show?" I said, "No, we're going to do about four or five, maybe ten takes on it. We'll stick it on the shelf, and when time when you have to, you yell, Captain Caveman, we'll just reach for the shelf." <laughs> and. Uh, Mel was an interesting guy to work with. He, uh, kind of the, the truth of it is after he had his accident, there was a corner of Sunset Boulevard out in Beverly Hills where he ran his Porsche off the road. And uh, I think he was in a great deal of pain uh, after that. And, and the first sessions that were done after he had this accident, we took the equipment out, put it in his, over his bed, and he was recovering from this accident, and uh, did uh, uh, Barney uh, with a, a mic hung over his bed. And uh, then he gradually recovered, and uh, I don't think ever fully recovered. I think the, 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 I didn't uh, have him go to sleep on me, <laughs> but uh, the, I think part of that was the, the amount of pain he was in. He was uh, very difficult to perform and to be happy when he was hurting all over. So, but Bell was, a, 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 what, the man of a thousand or maybe 10,000 voices. Uh, any other questions? No, let me ask Tony. Tony, you had, the, had an advantage when you were running shows 